Hey everyone, so I'm back with another Tereba unboxing video. I haven't really been uploading any of these recently because I've just been playing Tereba a lot less than I was in the past. I have so much stuff, so many little toys and stuffed animals and things like that, so I just didn't really need to keep accumulating more. But after watching My Hero Academia Heroes Rising movie, I knew I absolutely had to get me some My Hero Academia figures. So I have some My Hero Academia merch, I have the Nindroids, I have some little plushes and stuff, but I actually have no figures, and that's super weird for me because I love figures, and I would look online to kind of see how much everyone was charging for them, and they were always 30 plus, you know, Box Lunch and other shops like that sell them for way more than that, so I decided to get back on Tereba, use my free tickets, and give it, you know, a few turns and see if I was able to win any for less than what those places were charging. Now, a couple of the ones in here did cost me a little bit more than they should have, but others in here I won fairly easily and fairly quickly, so I think they balanced each other out. And as you can tell from the thumbnail and the title, there is not one, not two or three, and not four figures in here, but five. So I've already cleared off the shelf on my bookcase that they're going to go on, so all that's left is to open the box and take a look at them. Hopefully everything arrived okay. This is like the best condition I've ever received a Tereba box in, but it does sound like there is some shifting room in there. So let's just hope from Japan to me, all of our little boys are okay. That was weird, all of our little boys. Let's just hope they're all okay. <laughs> Ugh. Yes! Figures! So all five of these figures are basically from different series, different sets. So we're just going to pull them all out and take a look at the box. And then of course open them up and take a look at the figures and make sure that everything is okay inside. So just to take them all out to start, we have our Todoroki figure. This is the Age of Heroes Todoroki figure. We have Kirishima, which is also an Age of Heroes figure. We have our Deku. This one is actually the Heroes Rising um, versus Villain Deku. This is just Deku though. You can also get nine um, separately, but I don't really need or want a nine figure, especially not with the mask on, but that's what it would look like. So if you did want to buy both of them to go together, that's kind of how they look. Now, if he came without the mask, I mean, <laughs> I may have, to, may have to get me one of those. And if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The next one is the Bakugo figure. This is the Academy Model Volume 7. And I really liked the pose of this one. There was another Bakugo one on Tereba, but I liked the this one a lot more. And then I have the Academy Volume 2 of Dobby. And there was another version of this one that was black and white with no like burn marks or anything like that. But I was kind of like, mm, I don't really want a black and white figure. And I mean, his burns are like who he is so it just makes sense to get this guy all right now that they've all been taken out of the box let's open them up so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the age of heroes Todoroki and Kirishima just because they seem a bit smaller box wise I'm hoping there's not a big discrepancy between the sizes of the figures themselves but we won't know until we get in there and see so let's just cut the tape and my cat is playing in the box now. He's very excited, a new cardboard box to tear up. So if you hear him in the back, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> okay, so this is how some of my other figures have arrived in the past. It's just a plain box with a little cardboard divider there. And then the figure is just kind of stuffed inside. These are Crane Game Prize figures in Japan as well, I believe. So, you know, the packaging is usually fairly simple like this. But I'm not mad about it as long as he arrived safely and in one piece. So pretty straightforward. We have a stand, his body, and then his head is separate. I'm going to need some scissors to get into this bag, but so far everything looks okay. It doesn't look like any fingers or anything are broken, which is good. So let's just open him up. We're just going to cut across the three sections and dump the pieces onto the bed. And yes, I'm filming on my bed this time instead of on my desk just because I don't want to pull out all the desk and everything else. I figured this would be easier for me. So we have his little body here. This is 
such nice quality so I really love the sculpture of the hands right there it's really really soft I'm always very impressed because if you win a crane game prize here in the States it usually looks like crap but even crane game figures from Japan are super nice like this so then we also have his little head looks like he might have a little smudge there on his cheek that can probably be cleaned right off not a big deal so let's just fit his head right on there snaps into place and here we have our boy he looks awesome like he looks so good this is such a nice quality figure I've seen this one in person before like I said they do have this specific one at box lunch but um they wanted a lot more for him than I won for one in four on Tereba. So then he just fits onto the pegs of his stand like that. And we have ourselves a Todoroki figure. Awesome. Up next is Kirishima, also an Age of Heroes figure. Tereba did have a different uh, Kirishima figure where he was in more of like an action type pose. But I really liked this one because I liked that he was just, you know, in his hero gear, standing, looking very serious. For some reason, hella ripped, like super ripped. I don't know any teenagers that are that ripped, but I guess when you're a hero who can make your entire body rock hard, you can probably control how ripped your abs are. But they also work out a lot, so I guess it makes sense. All right, so we just open him up, dump all the pieces. Come on, spiky head, get out of here. I did not cut the hole big enough. There we go. We're just going to stuff that back in there. Okay. So put his head on. He's very um, sharp. Like very, very pointy his hair is. It can be a little painful if you're not careful. Alright, so here we have Kirishima. As you can see, if my camera will focus. There we go. The detailing of his expression and face is so nice. The painting is top-notch. There's no little crazy smudges or smears or missed points. I love the sculpting of his outfit, his pants, and his little waistband thing here that's all tattered. And then of course the shading, as you can see, instead of all one flat, boring color, it has a lot of nice little dimension to it. And then his very sharp little porcupine hair. Super, super impressed with the quality of this guy. Our third figure is the Heroes Rising movie Deku figure. If they come out with a Heroes Rising Bakugo, I will most likely um, go for that one just because I'd like to have them as like a set. I absolutely adored the movie. I was so into it. It was so well written, so well acted. Like it was just fantastic. If you haven't seen it, obviously 10 out of 10 recommend. So there's a little bit of instructions on this one actually just for his like power surging as you can see it sticks in around his arm into his little gauntlet all right easy enough i think let's pull him out he's a little more snug than the others were there we go set that aside yeah so we do have some pieces i'll have to punch these out this is his little power surging um right there I can smell the plastic of the figure. <laughs> so I'll have to punch those out and set him up. So I'm going to do that real quick off camera. So we had a little casualty, unfortunately. Um, it was connected in here right at this bend. And when you pull it loose, even though I was being very careful and pushing right at the pressure point, there was a small snap. As you can see, these two pieces have now snapped apart almost. So I'm going to super glue that. Not a big deal. Um, I mean, that sucks. That's poor design. The other one is okay. But as you can see, they had the points there and then like over here somewhere. So putting one, oop, bump the camera, putting one right at a very thin bend in the fa uh, in the plastic, not the best planning, but maybe I just have like, I don't know, beefy rough hands or something. I'm not sure. So I'm going to glue that real quick and then we're going to put Deku together. So here is our Deku figure. This figure is 
amazing. Honestly, look at the sculpting of his expression, of his hair. I didn't put the broken piece on just yet because it has to go around his arm right here. So I want the glue to fully dry and I actually think I'll have to break out like a stronger glue just to ensure that it doesn't like break again while trying to fix it. But I did get one of his little power things on there at his glove and I still think it looks super cool even if I'm only able to use the one. Hopefully the other one can be repaired, but it does come with this little black extender for the stand. So his pose is airborne and he's really, really going in for that hit on nine. I think this is probably my favorite one so far. I absolutely love this figure. It is so cool. He even has his little hood here that ties into the mask. This is a separate piece that went on and then his head went on. It's just... It's hard to believe, like even down to his little shoelaces here that have some movement to them a bit. It's hard to believe that this is a crane game prize, honestly. Japan just knocks it out of the park every time. Up next, we're going to open everyone's favorite villain or favorite bad burn boy, which is Dabi. And obviously I would like to get more figures like of Aizawa and All Might and some of the other characters, but I had to just kind of go with what was on the crane game to start. And when I saw that Dobby was there, I knew I had to have him. Can't have all these hero UA students and not have one villain at least. So, oh here you can see, this is what I was talking about earlier. Here's the, um, the alternate version, so there's no burns or anything like that, and he's in black and white. So this is a pretty cool figure as well, but I really wanted to just stick with the original look of him. So, let's see how he looks in person. I'm sure really good considering the quality of all the others thus far. He, ooh, he's a bit heavier than the others. He's also bigger. That could be because he is an adult and the rest of them are teenagers, but let's see. Okay, so he's actually already all put together, so I don't have to do anything here, which is good. The others, the head was separate, but his head is attached, so there's no separating of those pieces. So as y'all can see, they really nailed it on the detail, all the way down to his three little nose rings and every little staple, as well as all of the dark coloring for his burns the stitches on his clothes. I love the flare of his jacket here in the back of his coat and then the strings connecting it here. They really really outdid themselves with this one. The posing is so cool. It's such a cool like villain pose. Kind of looks like he flung his jacket and is like time to die kids. <laughs> he's got one hand stuffed in his pocket. Just awesome. He looks, he's so casually cool. Like he's not even trying. He's just naturally cool. And uh, this figure definitely embodies that. So on the stand, you get a good idea for the pose. He is absolutely in motion. I do think he flipped his jacket being a cool guy and he is stepping. I like that the weight is balanced. So the front foot here connects. So everything feels really secure. I uh, know a lot of other figures don't take sort of balance into effect. I do have some that you have to prop them against something or they're constantly falling over, but that is not the case here. These are so very well made, except for that Deku thing. That, that was bad planning on those little fragile pieces. Okay, last but certainly not least, we have everyone's favorite angry boy, Katsuki Bakugo. So this is the Ben Presto figure Coliseum Academy Volume 7. And there's multiple volumes. As I said, the Dobby is Volume 2. This is Volume 7. So obviously they have 1 through 7, different characters, different poses. But I really, really liked the pose of this one from what I could see. So I'm very excited to see it in person. The Tereba pictures are usually very low quality. <laughs> So you can kind of get an idea, but at the same time, it's a bit of a guessing game. So let's pull him out. Oh, he's heavy too. He's got more weight for sure than the others. He's not quite as heavy as Dobby, but oh, look at all these pieces. <laughs> okay, let's free the boy. Open him up. One long swoop. All the pieces. There's a lot of spikiness going on with his hair. Okay, so that, I love this. So they actually wrapped some bubble wrap to protect his gauntlet gun, the trigger here, because I feel like without that, if you put too much pressure on that, it could definitely break. So yeah, look at that. Oh wow, the sculpting of that is gorgeous. 
I mean, he even has little like battle markings here on his chest and side where his shirt is torn, his arm is damaged, his gauntlet is missing here. So you know he's been fighting, you know he probably busted it up. He's very good at that, but he's got one here. And the painting, there's a beautiful gradient of neon orange down to yellow on his gloves. And it's just really, really vibrant. There's also little battle damages, if you can see them, on this gauntlet itself. Like there's little cracks and stuff, so that's super cool. Let's get his legs, which are in a very intense pose. So this slides together. And it's a nice tight fit. So you don't have to worry about things coming loose or falling apart or whatever. So there's the body of our boy. So far, so good. So it wouldn't be Bakugo without his loud mouth. So let's put his head on there. And speaking of loud mouths, my cat is yelling at me in the background. He is very much a Bakugo if Bakugo was a cat, for sure. Okay, so now our boy has his head, so he's definitely yelling. His mask is totally damaged on this one side. It's even damaged here. You can see one of the spikes is broken and down here as well. So he has been going through it for sure. There's also more of the battle damage here on his face. And this is just, I mean, again, like Kirishima, very, very spiky. Oh my God, there's even dirt in his hair. Can you see that? There's not real dirt, obviously, but there's like markings. And then back here, where his mask is damaged, the camera got a bit dark, but where the mask is damaged, there's like ash, like soot, black markings. So this is really, really cool. The detail on this one has really taken into account his quirk and the aftermath, the damages, the dirt of his quirk. So we're just gonna put him on the stand. He has one that's like Deku with this black piece that fits in here and gives them a airborne type pose, which is so awesome. These guys look incredible. I really thought this pose was gonna go great with the Deku one. The other one he was just, I believe, just standing, kind of like Hiroshima and Todoroki were. So I wanted this more action pose and it is amazing. So I'm gonna put them all on my bookcase and we're gonna look at them all together. So here are my five My Hero Academia figures all set up in my bookcase. I'm very excited to finally own some of these. I really love how they look. I really love how well they're made and I just think they are the perfect addition to my collection. If you guys have any figures of My Hero Academia or anything like that, let me know down in the comments what your favorite is and let me know in the comments what your favorite figure from this haul is. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.